Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 192 of the Iron Coop Fights Movies. This episode is available on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and hosted by SoundCloud. I'm Kyo, your host. With me on the show today are my co-hosts, Emerson. Hey, what's going on? And Everett. Hey, what's up? This week, the team reviews Road to Perdition, followed by movie, television, and video game news. If you have not seen the review of the week and would like to avoid spoilers, check the show notes for the timestamp so you can still hear our new section. On to our review. Mike Sullivan, played by Tom Hanks, is an enforcer for powerful Depression-era Midwestern mobster John Rooney, played by Paul Newman. Rooney's son Connor, played by Daniel Craig, is jealous of the close bond they share, and when Mike's eldest son Michael, played by Tyler Hecklin, witnesses a hit, Connor uses the incident as an excuse to murder Sullivan's wife and youngest son. Forced to flee, Sullivan and Michael set out on a journey of revenge and self-discovery. I'm going to explain our rating system. On this show, we give the titles that we have watched a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title that we would highly recommend, while a draw is a title we didn't love but recognize others may appreciate. A loss means we do not recommend the title. Uh, So, Emerson, you want to go first? Sure. So I had never seen Road to Perdition before. Um, I give this a win. I think it was a really excellent movie. It kind of uh, shirked my expectations at pretty much every turn. Uh, I think Tom Hanks is excellent, and I'm shocked by just the depth that he continues to display playing different types of characters in completely different situations over and over again. I also think it's kind of funny that between this, uh, Saving Private Ryan, and The Green Mile, they're all technically kind of within the same time period. You could make an argument if he, you know, certain things didn't happen, that he was the same character all throughout. Um... And, yeah, I just think it's an excellent movie. It's a really interesting story. There's a lot of big-name actors in this who do very well. Um, And, yeah, it's a win for me. Um, Everett? I'm going to give it a win as well. I I thought this movie was amazing. I think that it's beautifully acted, directed, and written. Some of the scenes, I I wrote down a a few of them that I really loved specifically, but when they pair these unique-looking scenes with an amazing soundtrack, I think they just, they managed to make something amazing. And something I was thinking through watching this movie is this kind of, this movie kind of reminded me a little bit of Red Dead Redemption in a way, in that this is a, this is like a, something I'd love to play as a video game. Like the entire plot, if you were to go like bit by bit, what happens is like just something I'd love to play as like a great single player game. But anyway. Um, so you know yeah, that I this is based it. on a comic book? Really? Graphic novel? No. Yeah, I actually own it. I have not read it yet, though. Um, I'll probably read it after this. But, um, and there was actually. So we're gonna just talk spoilers. There's actually been more. um, Let me tell you. Okay, so the first one is like basically the movie. Um, Mm -hmm. and then there's, on the road to perdition, which is a three-part miniseries written after the original story but deals with the events within the same time frame um and so it was road to purgatory and road to paradise these two prose sequels deal with the adult life of michael o'sullivan jr under his adoptive identity of michael satariano after military service and baton during world war ii he returns to the world of organized crime to seek revenge on other gangsters who had been complicit in his father's death and then there's return to perdition um, which is where he just returns home from the war and gets caught up in the criminal underworld of his father and grandfather. Doesn't sound as good. Um, <laughs> hmm. The the there's a lot more violence in the book. That you know, I was like flipping through it. Um, I give this a win, but I I don't I didn't like it as much as I used to like it. Um, you know, when they get on the road. To perdition, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's the last hour of the film. All the best yeah. parts of the movie are in that one last hour, and the movie's only like 139 minutes or something. Mm-hmm. So the first 40 minutes are just set up, and it's a little too long and it's a little too slow. I, I and I found myself a little bored at the beginning. Did you guys? Not really. I I I actually thought it got somewhat slow. So the initial beginning was interesting because I had no idea what was happening, right? So I was trying to figure out – at first I thought, oh, Tom Hanks is a cop. 
or like a detective and then i was like oh wait no um and but for me the most the slowest part for me was actually right before uh his you know uh his family's killed because like it seems like they're just kind of going around and i wasn't really sure what the like reveal would be i thought him and and what's his name uh casino royale daniel craig uh, Craig? yeah i thought him and daniel craig were gonna be like partners against something else and and then i was like yeah daniel craig's not very likable so that part was slow for me but as a whole i think being the first time watching it and just trying to like figure stuff out kept it more interesting uh let's talk about the cast for a second um so tom hanks you know he does a great job Mm -hmm. i don't think he's right for this role though no He's, he's not the action character. This movie had some similarities structurally in some ways to, like, John Wick. It's a revenge story. It's better, but it's a revenge story of, like, oh, s- something bad happens to this man who has these skills, and then he's, like, not going to rest till he, like, punishes yeah. them all. I think the script is actually pretty bad, except for one thing where it's, like, I don't want my son to become like me. Okay. So like it stays pretty consistent with that, but besides that, I think I think it's like all over the place. How so? Well, like you know, in the synopsis it says Daniel Craig is jealous of his bond with uh with Tom Hanks with Rooney. Right. You guys know who Paul Newman is, right? Yes. The older guy, yeah. Yeah. Well, but you know he's like He's super famous. You guys know yes, he's Butch very Cassidy. Famous. And, he was an older actor. Yeah, he's great in this actually. Um, so, so like, there's the. Th- I never got the feeling that he loves Tom Hanks more than his own son. I just got the feeling that his own son is a little bit of a shit. <laughs> like, right. Like he doesn't like him <laughs> because his own son's a shit. But he never says like, you know, you're the son I should have. It was never like that, and they were never played against each other in that way i agree it was really about the witness thing that's what started this is like the kid witnessed it it's not like i hate that guy so i'm gonna find an excuse to kill his son they could have played that a little harder um and then played up the dynamic between like i won't give up my son but you're also my son and then it would have made more sense for like daniel craig to kill his own father because of that the way it is now like, what's the significance of Tom Hanks killing Rooney at that point? Rooney has already basically, like, turned his back on him. Right. So that's not the father-son dynamic. That was like, he cut Tom Hanks off immediately, yet the whole thing is predicated on he loves Tom Hanks like a son. And then his defense is like, I will never betray my son. <laughs> so, like, it doesn't it doesn't quite jive, like, you know. Um, and then... And then there's the the thing where it's from the kid's point of view, except it's not. Like, he's not there for almost everything. <laughs> That's true, because at the beginning, it's like, oh, okay, you're going to see this through the kid's life, but then it will randomly change to Tom Hanks. Yeah. Uh, which kind of makes sense. Like, the kid can't be there for a lot of the things Tom Hanks is yeah, doing. It makes like, sense at the beginning for what happens at the beginning that it's from the kid's point of view. But the kid needs to be more active because beyond that, it's just Tom Hanks. And then it, the movie at certain points feels very like Batman 1989. Not just because of the like aesthetic, you know, because they have that like uh, right. What what do you call it? Not that it's like 1920s, but there's like a a specific type of style. I know it's called like something. It's like Empire or something. I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, what talking about like the scenes in Chicago and stuff, like the buildings and like the sidewalk full of people and stuff like that. No, ba- Batman has like a gothic 1920s, whatever that style that's called. This movie is just 1920s. That's not why I say it's similar. I just feel like some of the action sequences and sometimes like s- the characters, they they almost seem like they could be in a Batman movie. Um, like especially Jude Law's character. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and then like the action sequences and the way like they're sh- they're shooting guns and stuff. Very, it felt very like like Batman nineteen eighty nine to me. Um, I I don't know. I I I I like the best part about this movie. I think is when they're on the road. Like I like stories like that. But it it's only an hour, 
And maybe because I had seen it a couple times now. I don't know. I think Jude Law is the best part of it. And the rest of it, like that whole montage where he's robbing the banks. It's a little silly, I feel like. I don't. Yeah, it is silly. I, I When that started, I was expecting like, oh shit, he's going to do bank robberies. But like, it's almost like comedic. Like he's talking to the people. He's giving them some of the money. He's like, I trust bankers. But it's stupid too. Like, it's like the most simple. Like it's it's we see Tom Hanks at a in a window, and the guy is the bank teller is just sitting there like, oh, what do you want to do? And then Tom Hanks points the gun at him. <laughs> the guy puts his yeah, hands. Yeah, he's up. like, uh oh, time to get the money. You know, yeah, it's that. like it's like a joke. And then his like son like rolls up. Like, yeah, no, I agree. that. And then it fades to Jude Law, like, running the nickel across his uh, knuckles a bunch of times. <laughs> like, he's, like, just thinking. I, I mean... I, I actually kind of like that part of the movie, just because the, the whole bonding sequence between him and his kid were, was kind of funny at some points. The like driving part? Him, yeah, like, when he's teaching him to drive. and Yeah, that part's not bad. Up. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not saying I don't like the movie, but I used to like it a lot more. This is the first time I've watched it, and I'm like, oh, I actually really see the cracks in this. This is why people don't talk about this movie. There is something wrong with it. I don't think yeah. it hits emotionally the way that it should. Even at the end, I used to think that that was such a deep ending, and I'm like, yeah, it makes sense because it actually fits with the the, well, the briefly, theme. Briefly, briefly, like I want to expand on that, but let me just like explain something i liked about the movie before we delve into like where you're going kia which is like what wasn't as great so i think the movie does a really good job of like it subverted my expectations several times like i didn't expect his wife and his other son to be murdered i didn't expect but that's uh, the inciting incident that is the exciting but like at that point in the movie i didn't expect like i expect 40 minutes in yeah (laughs) Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know what was gonna happen. That's the point. Like, I was literally like, "What is gonna?" I guess be the, the inciting issue? incident is actually him witnessing the murder. But yeah, that's passive, so it's like. But so, like, that was a good, and then you know, the ending when Jude Law shows up and kills him. I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be a happy ending," and then no. So I just wanted to get those out of the way to say, like, I enjoyed both of those. Like, they were shocking to me, and I was like, "Oh, okay, those those are crazy. Those are interesting." But that being said. Yeah, it's there's something jarring about the way the movie jumps from place to place to place and his attitudes change and his like I don't Ever did you like the same things? Yeah, yeah, sort of. I mean I I definitely had a few gripes with the movie, but for the most part I didn't really have that many problems. Well, did with you it. did you like did it what well, did it catch you off guard when his family got killed yeah it did mainly because ending? uh well the ending yeah oh no the ending took me by surprise like he's just he's just standing there and immediately just gets popped it's i thought it was a good ending but i can see how no it is a good ending i can see how it'd be kind of weird for some people but no, that's it, why it's I'm a going. good ending it fits with the theme of the movie he's trying to like prevent his son from falling into but see that's a separate issue the whole like i don't want my son to become a murderer and I like, go into this life of crime is very different from like, I need to get revenge and murder the guy that murdered my family. Cause like, that's what I'm good at. Those are two very different ideas. Mm-hmm. They don't, and they don't really cross over at all. Like, I don't want my kid to be a murderer. Let's get him out of this life. It's like, well, so what was your plan? You were going to like raise your children and your family under the spell of this mobster and like his control. He's literally killing people all over the place. And you're just going to bring him up with all that influence and he's never going to be like, hey, like, are you a mobster? Like, he's never going to realize that. Well, and and to build on that, too, like, I wasn't entirely clear that he didn't want his son to be like him until, like, pretty deep in the movie. Yeah, because he says to in that basement of the church or whatever, he says, like, Michael has a chance to see heaven or something. It's like, yeah, he could also see it sooner if if you want <laughs> like is that what you're trying to do is like are you is you are you just concerned about heaven because you could kill him right now and he would go to heaven like he hasn't killed anybody well but then like, the when did that like, i thought you were trying actions, to keep him alive 
a lot of his actions, like, you know, he's like, he's giving him the gun, he's telling him to help him with the bank robbers, he's teaching him to drive, he's like talking about the issue. I thought he was like setting him up to like defend himself. And, and also in like a kind of cool He's like way. taking all the wrong steps. Well, he's, he's yeah, making and, it seem yeah. cool. Like, he's like, look yeah. how slick I'm going to rob this bank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and so it's and like you're the getaway driver, like, but don't exactly. ever be like me. <laughs> yeah, that's where it's like it's I don't know. It's almost like someone decided at the end they're like, eh, we need like an emotional thing. Yeah, well, no, you do need the like. Imagine if this movie didn't have that, it would literally be nothing. It would just be them in a car, like riding around shooting at things, and then they die or don't die. Who cares? Um, you can see, like, now that we're doing this podcast, you guys can see. How many scripts are actually pretty bad when yeah. they when they make it to like you know you have Paul Newman, Daniel Craig, Tom Hanks. By the way, Tyler Hecklin, the kid, that's the CW Superman. Um, really, really? Yeah, that's him. Wow. Um, he he like disappeared for a while and then he showed up as that. That's kind of a big role for him. Uh, I like him. I haven't watched that show, but. Um, huh. You have such a good cast, and there are some cool scenes in this movie. Um, but, like, th- this is why this movie's forgotten. Nobody talks about Tom Hanks and Road to Perdition, ever. You guys hadn't even seen it. No. Yeah. And this seems like the kind of movie you would have seen. Well, I mean, yeah. it, it's a good movie, but when you're comparing it to the other Tom Hanks movies, especially after we've just watched, like, six of them, it's definitely in the lower tier of his performances. It's a good. It's a good movie. Is it it's a, in the lower tier? I don't not know. Not like middle to lower tier. Like it's not a terrible performance by far, but there are definitely better ones. I mean, I would say he's as good in this as he is in Castaway. It's not better. He actually works really hard in this movie to try to sell himself as a. He's just the wrong guy. He's. It's not his fault. But he did well, great who, acting. Who would you have replaced him with? I don't know because I don't remember who was famous around that time. Well, this is two thousand two, right? So. Well, there's a couple things about it. It's like so they're supposed to be Irish. Uh-huh. They're an Irish mob. Well, he's Irish. I don't know if the whole mob. Well, is Rooney. Irish. Yeah, the guy's Paul Newman's character's name is Rooney. Right, but don't they like work for Capone? Capone's not Irish. Well, I that's think- the thing. Yeah, no, it, it wasn't Capone. It was Nitty, I think. Frank Nitty. Who but is Nitty a famous? Works for Capone. Yeah, Frank Nitty's a famous mobster. Also, so like that's a real person, but the Italians don't work with like you can't be in the Italian mafia if you're Irish. I remember them yeah. making a comment like you have friends in Ireland, why don't you just go move away or something? Yeah, I'm, but it's like the idea that they're like like in bed together. That it's, doesn't. Yeah, it's strange. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things that also kind of lost me. Where it's like they, I, I, they were going to Nitty, but they said they were going to Capone, and Nitty's like, I work for Capone. So there's like six levels of who works for who, and like, like a yeah. web of Nitty like, control uh, for the mafia. I think Nitty had his own movie that I saw. I used to know a lot about mobsters. Yeah, Nitty, the Enforcer, 1988. It's a television movie. About Al Capone's enforcer, Frank Nitti. Um, like, I mean, what's his name? Uh, Stanley Tucci does not really give off the no, vibe. No, I, I actually like him. him. He gives off the vibe of an accountant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway. I, okay, so what were we talking <coughs> about before I, we, I went off about the Irish and the Tom, Italians? T- Tom Hanks oh, who is would not it have the been? right character. So it has yeah. to be like an American guy to be a mafia enforcer. It's a weird role. Um, it, it almost seems like he needs to be like a much grungier person. I don't know what Harrison Ford was up to around that time. Um, Mel Gibson. Well, this is two thousand two, so. I mean, I don't, I don't know Gibson, how old they were. Gibson, maybe. Yeah, he could have. Um, Tom Hanks. I think they were trying to go for like the soft father character. And then allowing him to play something harder. That's probably why he wanted to do it was to branch out a little. I just don't buy him as like every time I look at his face, I'm like, I'm not scared of this guy. Um, I'm, I'm looking at movies like from 2002. Uh, some of the ones we've seen like Rain of Fire came out 2002. I feel like there's someone in there that I'm forgetting that could have played this. Uh, you mean like Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> no, not Matthew McConaughey, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm maybe forgetting. No, it has to be someone a little older. 
is the problem. I, like maybe Bruce Willis, although I don't, he, I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's hard to like. It, it's hard to go back this far and try to recast someone. Like, yeah, it has to be one of those famous guys because he has to be able to carry the movie, and it has to be he has to be like on the older side. So Mel Gibson, so like Nicholas Robert Cage. De Niro? I mean, no, he's Italian. You, you need, yeah, like, yeah, I know. So Mel Gibson, <laughs> Nicholas Cage. These are the people that are, you know. Wind Talkers came out that year. We Were Soldiers came out that year. Um, could have been a lot of people. Who's um? Okay, this guy's is this guy Italian or Irish? Kevin Ish. Costner. Who's the guy who plays Aragorn in a uh, in Lord of the Rings? Viggo Mortensen. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Him. Could he have He's done Danish. it? He's Danish. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, any a lot of people could have done this role. To be honest. It requires some good acting, but it like facially, you just have to kind of look American. And I mean, most of what Tom Hanks does is just stand there <laughs> most of the time, and then he does these action scenes that just don't feel like him. No. So. And you can see in the action scenes, like when you said it was a comic book movie, I was like, that makes total sense. That scene where he's like in the dark in the rain and he opens up on them, that's like a total comic book. Light. Yeah, and even like, so how did he kill the driver? I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. That scene, I think it was supposed to be more powerful than it actually was. Because, like, with the music and, like, he's slowly killing guards individually as the guards are firing back and, like, nothing. That, I think that scene would have been better if, like, they were getting to the car. He goes into the car. He realizes the driver's dead. And then there's a burst of machine gun fire and the guards just fall. Yeah, they were going for, like, this moment where Paul Newman realizes, like, oh, it's him and, like, so this is what he's decided to do. And it's like, okay, but like I said at, right at the beginning, I don't think that Tom Hanks killing Rooney is the right thing. It only works for the plot because it basically allows Tom Hanks to then get permission to kill Daniel His Craig. Son, Connor. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, you think he would know that. Like as soon as, as – when Connor like hears that his dad is dead, he must know like, okay, there's no leverage for them protecting me anymore. I better get the hell out of here. Instead of just lounging in the bathtub by himself. Yeah. I mean, who's pay like who's paying those people to guard him? Well, Ruby's no one. Dead. But I'm guessing that's one of the reasons why they just let him walk in and do it. Well, yeah, I'm saying, but like, why were they even there anymore? It doesn't make sense. Oh, so, obligation. So and like also after Daniel Craig like kills the family, he's basically out of the movie. He has like one or two more scenes, one where he talks and one where he dies. Like, mm -hmm. he, you know, it should have been him versus Tom Hanks. And him, like, fighting his father for control and, like, you know, let, airing it all out. Like, I want to take over, like, you're in my way, blah, blah, blah. He kills his father. And that gives Tom Hanks, that gives the Italian mafia, like, we don't want to deal with him anymore. He's volatile. So, like, you have the green light to take him out, and we'll take care of you. And then you have to reconcile that whole arc with the sun. But, like I said, it doesn't drive anyway, so you don't have to... It doesn't have to be that arc. It could be something else. Um, that doesn't necessarily lead to the ending that you had. Um, I think, ultimately, the best part of this movie is, like, the aesthetic, the 1920s, and, like, the ending, because you don't see it coming. Mm. And, uh... Yeah. I don't know. Like I used to think that that Tommy gun scene was amazing when I was younger. Um, with the in the rain with the yeah. no sound, I, that, I know, thought that I was, was a great scene. I was twelve, and I I thought it was amazing up until today. We've like, when just I been watched talking it. about it being like pretty questionable. It's not horrible. It's it's more like stylistic than realistic. Um, but it, it is a little silly, and also it's like Tom Hanks. Like I just don't buy it. You know. Um, I don't have a whole lot else to say. I was, you know, I thought this would be one of our like more interesting movies since you guys hadn't seen it, and I, I do like it. But I, I don't know. I, I would say before this, I would say it's not in my top ten, but it's in my top fifteen or top twenty. Now I'm, I'm not sure anymore. Yeah, it might yeah, be I like mean, top I don't 30. know if I'd put this in the top twenty. Like, let me put it this way. So I, I did give it a win. I don't think it's you know bad, but. If we look at his filmography, for example, 
where would you rank this of the movies we've seen so far? Would this be the lowest or would this be above that thing you do? Above that thing you do for sure. So, um, yeah, here's what we've watched so far. We've got um, – we started out with Philadelphia. Yeah. It's, um, Philadelphia is better. We, okay. Then we hit Forrest Gump. Didn't we, didn't we do Greyhound you know, at some Forrest point Gump, that? I don't know. They're about equal, I think. Apollo 13? This is better than Apollo 13. Okay, yeah. that thing you do. But not everyone would agree with that. It's better than that thing you do. Saving Private Ryan. Definitely not better. Not, not better. Right, The Green Mile. Not better. Nope. Castaway. Um, I'd, pu- I'd put it on par with that. I don't know. I think Castaway has a tighter script. And then we have Road to Perdition. But, like, yeah, every time we watch Greyhound, I I think this is better than Greyhound. This is better than Greyhound. Greyhound is like... like the Greyhound is like the later modern version of this movie for him. Yeah. But then like just looking at like the filmography, the movies I know I've watched, um, like most of these I think would be better than this. Yeah. Some, some, like so this is, kind of, this is like a middle of the pack thing. Um, I, I always thought it was interesting because it was a graphic novel, which I found out later, but I never got around to reading it. So, um, some of it it's very it's very close to the graphic novel other than they added jude law's character for the movie um so i wonder how that affects the ending i'll have to check that out but um okay do we Makes have sense, a fight of the week yeah we do have a fight of the week so the big the big thing of this movie is that after his family dies he needs to find his way to connor and get revenge Okay, and the way he decides to get to Connor well, also is by away. trying to steal them. Yes, also running <laughs> away, but he wants to get revenge against Connor. Okay, but do you and see the how the movie is this... so like disjointed in that? Like the two. I know. I believe me. I know. That's why the fight of the week is challenging. But I have an idea. Um, he decides one of the parts of the movie that I think could have been really interesting was the bank robbery spree. I think that was a real wasted opportunity. Like, that could have been a really interesting portion of the movie, but as you said, it became like a comedic joke. Now, you know, in that scene, when he's robbing the banks, he has a getaway driver, but, you know, he doesn't really seem to be robbing the banks. He just kind of walks in and says, give me the money, and they say, okay. Right. Right? Well, because he's robbing the, like, mafia The mobsters. Yeah. Okay. But so, Kia, if you were in charge, like, you're, you, you are in Tom Hanks' situation. They've, they've attacked your family. They've com- committed murder. You need to get to Connor, and you believe the best way to do this is taking the mob's money. If the three of us were in this situation, you had me and Everett as your, like, little helpers here. You're directing us. Do you think we can achieve the same result or a better result than Tom Hanks? We've got the assassin after us. We've got Jude Law after us. But can we achieve the same result or better where we get to Connor, we kill him, or are we doomed to fail? Are we screwed? And it's us. Not us as Tom Hanks. It's us. I think that I would set a trap for the hitman instead. Okay, how would we set a trap? If I knew he was. We know the hitman's after us. He, he came after us. We know he's coming. Yeah. Um, well, what happens is like we'll be driving because we know he's like he's on our tail wherever we're going. So he right. knows all the banks we're going to hit. You know, it's kind of something that the movie doesn't really address. <laughs> but like he knows all the banks, obviously, that the mafia has their money in. And obviously there's like a there's an order to which you would go that would be most efficient. So you can kind of predict where he's going to go next every single time. Right. So I think what you do is um, you don't wait for the heist because you don't know how he's going to hit you. He's That's his trap. So you don't right. do the heist. What you do is you go on the heist where you know he'll follow. So like on the road between the towns or something. Um, okay. Basically what I do is um, – uh, we'll be driving, the three of us, and then I'll say there's car trouble, and um, we we get out, and I'll just, like, bust the tire, and then tell Everett that the tire's busted, and that he should oh, stay no. with the car <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> until we go get help, and then we'll just go, like, hide in the, in the grass nearby and wait for the hitman, and he'll come up, and he'll shoot whoever's in the driver's seat. <laughs> And then we'll ambush him there, right out in the open, the two of us in a crossfire. 
I'm just imagining, like, you're like, the car's busted, we'll go get help, whatever, it's like, okay, and we walk, like, 20 feet, and we clearly, like, lay down in the grass, and everyone's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> like, just stay with the car, we're, we drop something. <laughs> and we're, like, in the grass, Everett, like, sees the car coming behind us, he's like, hey, isn't that, isn't that the assassin's car? <laughs> Yeah, because like as at one point he even sees their getaway car. He sees that they painted it red. Yeah, and like you can. That's tra- a good point. I didn't even yeah. think of that. Like he could have killed them at like many times realistically. And if he doesn't really care about like shooting a guy in a hotel, then like what are you going to do with the body? Why don't you just go to the bank and wait for him to come, and then just shoot exactly. him when he walks in and then leave. <laughs> Like just exactly. Run away. Well, he's also willing to shoot a cop outside of a diner. Yeah. So, like the guy obviously like. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying he has the leverage. He knows where they're gonna go. Either that, or they have to stop robbing banks. So. Yeah. Let him stop so robbing banks. The mafia will be happy with that, and then he'll go away, which is what Rooney wanted. So. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't do that. So you have to like lay the trap for him because you know every time you go to the bank. You're vulnerable. They know yeah, you're he coming. Could be there. I mean, how many banks are you going to go to? How many towns? How many major towns with banks like that is the mob connected in? It's it kind of like it's bizarre. And he clearly ambushes him when he goes to visit the accountant too. So yeah, like you have to yeah. you have to set the trap for him. Basically, where does where is he expecting you to go? Go there and lay the trap. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, fair enough. All right, um, let's go to the roundup. So WandaVision, Episode 6, and spoilers. I just got to say, um, right. once again, and I don't know if you can call this a strength or a weakness of the show, I still have no idea what the fuck is going on. <laughs> <laughs> I think this episode is worse than the previous two. I didn't it like is it. worse, but it's worse in an acceptable way. In the sense that this episode, stuff happened. We actually feel like they're building to something. It's I agree. not like filler until the last episode where like we do we pretend to kill the hero and then they don't die. But you know, it's they're not just stalling to the end, basically. But to me, like so far the best episode was the fourth episode. The one where like they ripped us out of the stupid sitcom and we had like a here's what's yeah. been happening outside. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um episode five, remind me what happened there? Uh, the last the one before this one was, um, they tried to assassinate oh. her she came out quicksilver like, shows up yeah yeah that one was end. not a bad episode either because it developed a lot of things like with vision mm-hmm. vision like moved the plot suspicious. forward suspicious yeah. yeah and this one like he moved like he literally took one step in episode five he took like another step in episode six like you like he could have solved this immediately yeah and so the problem with this episode, we still haven't, like, really, like, as you said, we don't really know what's going on, which worries me that it's just going to be a bunch of nonsense until the final episode. Because this episode, well, Sword got, like, destroyed. That guy t- is, like, turning into a villain. The, like, so well, how many more episodes do we have left? We have three. But next week's episode is supposed to be, like, the Modern Family one. Mm. So um, that's the last of the sitcom ones. And then what I've heard is the last two episodes are like full CGI, like Marvel movie type stuff. I could get behind that, unfortunately. I don't like waiting for that. <sighs> well, whatever. I mean... But, eh. but so my point is, before we get into all of it, I have to say, um, I think that her costume, her Scarlet Witch costume, I'm surprised more people aren't talking. Is that not like the sexiest superhero costume ever put on film? Because I, I'm just, I'm like kind of surprised. Like it was very yeah. re- like tight for fitting and like revealing. And um, yeah, remember, that's why they had to change it is because it was too a little revealing. Change it from what? They that's why they didn't give her like an adaptation sort of for the actual MCU's because it was you too mean revealing. In, originally? Yeah, originally. Because yeah, you know she yeah. was in that costume in the episode, right? No, Everett? I know. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I watched the same episode you did, but well, it just sounded like you were saying that's no, why they yeah. couldn't use it. That's not what you said, like... but no, yeah, they that makes sense. So uh, they put her in it, but like, remember when? Uh, I mean, you guys don't remember, and I wasn't alive either. Power but when girl. Prin- no, no, no. When Princess Leia was in the slave outfit, 
and she became like a sex object and like even now i think they finally said that they're not going to make it anymore because it was kind of like (laughs) this is uh like i'm not saying it was bad or i'm offended or i'm just saying this was pretty close to that level of like sexiness like what other superhero female superhero has dressed like that uh emerson made a good one power girl from dc did it but has she been in a movie or no? In no, terms of live just, action, we yeah, haven't she's been in uh, anime. animated stuff, but they yeah, changed the ta- outfit there we're, too. We're not talking about animation. <laughs> um, live action Wonder Woman is the only other one. I mean, she kind of wears a short skirt. She's like sexualized, but it's like armor. Mm. This is literally like. Can you imagine if a mom dressed like that for Halloween? Like yeah. she's got like the fishnet. Ridiculous. Um, I liked. It. I thought she looked great. But I no, she did look great. But it's interesting because you're right. Usually, like this would be like a lot of buzz around this negative or positive, and I haven't heard anything. Yeah, I mean, they didn't sexualize her in the episode, like in terms of uh, plot. Like there were there were no like ass shots, and like no one was like hitting on her because of it. Um, which is like kind of like that's implied with the slave outfit that she's like a sex slave or something. Um, but I, I yeah, I don't know. I. I thought that was interesting. Like, she looked like super hot. <laughs> that outfit. I like how they played it off <laughs> as a Halloween a Sokovian fortune teller. Yeah, I mean, what were the kids supposed to be? Also, I uh, hate the kids. <laughs> yeah, I really dislike the kids. A lot of people like them, but I, I yeah, well, maybe well, they'll disappear I, after the show's over. I hope so. Also, yeah, you, I really can hope you so. can you really think about how boring they are? They're literally Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Quicksilver. But they're both guys. But they're called Wiccan and Speed guys. But like, what's the hook? Like, what am I supposed to look at this and be like, "Wow, again"? Like, they're also the Speedsters are. That's one of the hardest powers to write around. It's insane. So like now, now there's two of them, mm-hmm. and possibly three if like there's another Quicksilver. Yeah. Can I can I also say it's kind of weird watching Evan Peters do super speed that. Is so obviously um, what the uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson did. It's like that version of it. When I'm so used to seeing him do the version from X Men, I don't think it's weird. I just think so. We don't even know where he's from. I think the reveal is going to be that he's just he is not connected to X Men at all. He's just a dude in this universe who's normal. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that's that would be, be a the cop out, result. but. I don't want him to be connected to X-Men. I don't want him to be connected at all. That's the only thing that makes sense, but that is also, yeah, that's kind of a cop-out. And if he isn't connected to X-Men, like the fact that you put him in is, that's weird that you did that. Yeah, what would be the point of putting him in in the first place? That's really weird that they did that. For the fan service? Um, Because also, and I don't think I'm in the minority in this one, I don't want the Fox X-Men to be the X-Men in the MCU. No. I like no, some I of those actors. Start. Yeah, I but like it's enough. Like that timeline is so ruined anyway. Evan Peters looks old now. Mm-hmm. And and like he's clearly not the X-Men version because he does unless he's just lying, I don't know. He's not he doesn't remember things properly. He his like you said his speed force is a different speed force. It's very much Aaron Taylor Johnson. They even showed Aaron Taylor Johnson's face. It's weird that it wasn't Aaron Taylor Johnson when she saw the dead version though. Like it showed his face. Yeah. I mean, I, probably that was a money thing, but like that would, it seems like she would be looking at the real face, not. It, it's bizarre. Um, yeah, it's, it's super strange. Um, but the other thing is like, he, they keep making 20 million references to the devil. So I'm assuming the end result is going to be, oh, it's the devil. Yeah. The most interesting thing about this episode for me is the fact that Agnes was clearly faking being frozen. But something was happening to her. Yeah. And I don't know what. And it's like if like whatever was happening to her was was being done to her by Scarlet Witch, and yet Scarlet Witch doesn't know. Right. So I just, and, again I don't know what that means. Like what does it mean? Yeah, no that's I don't know. Like Did you guys it, think she was faking? I didn't uh, think she was I faking initially. But, but she then was, I was further like, than everyone else. And like the other lady couldn't even move. No, I know. That's why I was like, oh, at first I was like, eh, and then I was like, okay. But the issue I have is like, I don't. 
And so she's not a sword agent that we know of because she's not like coming and going to right. check in with and, them. And she wasn't like they the sorted people have never said anything about her. But here's the problem. Like one Where of the a I don't know, but one of these fucking realities the one of the things this shows remember when they break back into the sword camp before wanda expands it and it turns out that the boss is like has all this extra information and knowledge that he hasn't shared with them like yeah but it's not even like and shit like that yeah but it's not even like crazy information i know it's not but the fact it's, that they try to play i it assume off, like, they oh had it all yeah <laughs> yeah but the fact that they try to play it off like oh my god look at all this stuff he knows and is tracking and like that makes me like i'm like is he working with agnes and Agnes? i'm assuming the reveal is going to be sword is evil and I, i'm just so tired it's of that. time for some reveal like what has been revealed so far that, that wanda um, is like kind of the bad guy maybe well no the biggest reveal is that that Vision the town dead. is not real, which you knew immediately. <laughs> because, like, she's obviously not in the 1950s and Vision is alive, right? Well, I'd say, like, one of the bigger reveals is that she can actually alter matter and DNA. And I, f- I feel like that's going to have big ramifications for the future. If I she, hope it doesn't. If she, yeah, if she says she is, like, I mean, Everett, you're right. Because if she's, oh, God, like... That's if she, how they're going to introduce turned mutants, I'm Monica sure. Rambo into Photon. Does that make Monica the first mutant? Uh, also, I don't know. is Darcy going to have powers now? Her DNA got altered by entering the place. So, this and, is the thing, and what though. about all those people that are in there? I know, but this is what I'm trying to say. Like, I don't want. This is not the way I was hoping for mutants to be created. She just randomly brings some people in. Like, it should be something she has no control over that, like, washes over the world and affects very, well, like, random people. She might people. not be, well, I don't know. I don't well, know about that. I, I, but I, I don't wondering. like the idea that, like, oh, you just walk into this thing and she makes you a mutant and now you're a mutant. Like, well, I like the way. idea that all the people she kidnapped are, like, it's like a small population of mutants. Yeah, but then it's like those people are going to be our X-Men. You think, like, like those people? Well... Imagine if I prefer to start smaller rather than. No, I'm fine starting smaller, but I don't like like those people. Like they, I don't know. I think she's gonna like do some type of widespread explosion thing. Yeah, I'd say the good way to she's gonna pop. <laughs> the good way to adapt House of M and bring mutants in and give her the mental snap would probably be, yeah, a widespread expansion. Imagine if she covers the entire planet with that shit. Breaking yeah, her psyche point, in the first place, like in on one hand, and then altering everybody on Earth's DNA, giving somebody powers, not giving somebody else powers. That that'd be a really good excuse. It's it's weird if we if like Darcy doesn't get powers, then maybe that establishes that like not everyone gets powers. Which I would like. I would like that. It's also kind of flimsy. It is flimsy, but here's here's what I'm <laughs> also, assuming. Also, kind of sucks. <laughs> like based on powers. what we're talking about. Like, I'm assuming in the final two episodes, something's going to happen, and the bad guy is going to, like, kind of beat Wanda. Like, the real bad guy, and she's going to wash over the Earth, and then Doctor Strange's movie is him dealing with it. Yeah, uh, I forgot about that. She's in that movie, isn't she? Right. So She and should we, die been, at the end of this. It's been said that her, that this show is the lead-up to Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness. And yeah. then once well, we've they said get rid that of the before. field, everyone still has their no, DNA No, we have altered, said that so before, that but my mutants. point is that, like... 100 percent. the ending of this is just gonna go like i'm expecting dr strange to show up at the end of this show like, he absolutely briefly. is yeah I mean, and everyone's gonna lose their minds i didn't think they would do it it's like really yeah yeah they're gonna defeat agatha or agnes whatever the fuck her name is and um <laughs> and she's gonna be the minor one and then it's gonna lead to like the big bad that's dr strange uh dr strange's villain um that's pretty much oh a given God. Now, people are talking about who is, um, what's her name's aerospace friend? I think, Everett, you said it might be Reed Richards. That's what people are thinking. Yeah, but I I looked it up, and apparently Photon has, like, a boyfriend named Blue Marvel. That's an aerospace engineer. So I have no idea. It's not going to be Reed Richards. Well, imagine if this is how... The sword agents who got sucked in. Can you imagine if this is how they introduce, like, all the Fox stuff at once? Like, they use the excuse, like, DNA-altering stuff. You bring in the mutants, you give all the Fantastic Four their powers, 
Uh, oh, the only... oh, I thought you meant they were going to marry the two universes via this. And I was no, like, oh, I meant well, like I if they're if they're not going to marry the two universes with multiverse shit, and they're not going to give the mutants their powers with the snap radiation, which is what I wanted, then the only other reasonable expectation would be it's her that does it for everyone. Because how else are you supposed to have the Fantastic Four show up this fast? You can you can find ways to do it. Um, I mean, think about how fast they brought Doctor Strange up. Um, yeah, I just we don't know anything, and that's kind of the crazy thing is like we just don't know anything about it. And it's epi- six episodes in. If they killed her at the end of this, if like they could, this could have been like one of the greatest miniseries of all time. If you if you edit the first couple episodes. And you build up to something crazy that no one saw coming. Like you give her the the title of the show, and then she dies at the end, like Dark Phoenix style, and does like real like uh, reality bending stuff, like changes the status quo of the MCU forever. It would be like an absolutely essential part of the MCU. And like I like Elizabeth Olsen, I like her a lot actually, but hasn't she kind of done her thing? Mm-hmm. Well, she's over there. Welcome. But and the other problem is like. She's like but a like, god now. I think they're scared. Yeah, she's like a god. I think she's they're scared to kill her, though, because... I, I, okay, we're in this really weird point in the MCU where pretty much everybody we've, like, come to know and like is gone. And they're trying to introduce, like, the new generation. But she's so, not like, I, the new generation. No, she isn't. And so, like, but they kill her. Like, let's say that... I'm, assu- I'm hoping Vision doesn't come back. But let's say, like, she goes away. Then who do we have? We have Captain Marvel. We have Doctor Strange. Spider Man. I mean, you well, have yeah. Spider Man not for long though. Eh, you have him for one more movie. Mm-hmm. The the point is, Scarlet Witch is never an A list. She never had her own movie. Right. So this like, is the, her. She's movie. not this really. Is what she gets like everyone you just listed. She's not in that league. Um, not saying that she has to. I think she's been done. Like she had her origin in Age of Ultron. She had her coming out party in Civil War. She fought the big fight in Civil War. She got a lot of screen time. Sorry, in, in Infinity War, and um, showcased her powers in in Endgame. You know, she fell in love with Vision. She lost Vision. Now we're really exploring that. You've got a little miniseries, and she's super powerful. Like you said, she's basically a god. She should be the mother of mutants and like go out like that, Dark Phoenix style. That should be the Dark Phoenix. Because there's no like the MCU's they should they're stupid if they try to do the Dark Phoenix again. This is the Dark Phoenix. Do it right now. So like, yeah. I mean, is she gonna die in Doctor Strange instead? Because there's no point in keeping her around. She's way too fucking powerful. I oh I have a bet. Oh no. What if this ends with like she's lost her mind. She's like tortured. Uh, Vision's dead. She can't control her stuff. And then Doctor Strange's movie, like the re- like the resolution there is she gets to go to like a different because it's called Multiverse of Madness. She gets to go somewhere else where she can be happy with everyone, and we never see her again. That would that's an option. I could see I could sounds see them like doing a shitty... that. Things have done that. Before. I could see them doing that. I think it sounds shitty, but it sounds like like because I- I- Kia, like you're saying, we know she's in it. So what the fuck is her role gonna be? Like yeah. if if she's gonna go off the deep end, there has to be like. A solution. Either she dies, or she like goes away. Yeah, she has to have like a solid resolution. Otherwise, she just exists for the rest of the MCU, and it doesn't make any sense. She yeah. deserves a good death, though. Like, don't just give her some shitty ending. I don't know. Um. Anyway, well, is there anything else in that episode that we missed? I mean, the kids have powers. She doesn't believe in Quicksilver anymore. I mean, who knows? I mean, Vision leaves and gets almost disintegrated. But then he comes right back. Yeah. I mean, he gets disintegrated because she's pulling him back or because he's dead on the outside? I think it's because what... That, that, that's what kind of dead in sense. reality. That's what I thought it was. Because he, he's not yeah. actually But alive. we don't know. So, like, there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> well, th- um, think, of it, think of it this way. Um... When the dr- when one of those drones goes into the world and it comes, I don't think it comes back out, but it goes in and it becomes a little toy plane or the helicopter. But then Monica comes back out and all her clothes are still different, but they're they're like still in that like 1950s style. So if the excuse is that if he tries to leave, 
he should still technically be solid, but if if they're the only excuse I can use is he's reverting back to what he was on the outside, which would be like a, a disassembled corpse. It it kind of doesn't make I don't sense. Know. Okay, what about this? What is she like about Vision? He's uh, I don't know. The Mind Stone was a connector. I mean, I guess he developed like a personality at some point. All right, you can give him that. He like became more human. But like, what is it about him specifically? Because the way he behaves in the show, in this show, he's like playing a character. So like, that's not his real personality. I, yeah, I, don't, I don't even know, know what his personality is, other than like calm. I rewatched Age of Ultron to like think about this, and like. I'm sorry for your loss. Well, that makes even less sense there because he's. Yeah, what is but he? like, no, but they like try to set it up like he like saves Wanda. In Ultron, he's the one who saves her, when the city's collapsing, uh-huh. and he rescues her and like takes her out, and they have like a moment, and then there's like the civil war moment, but then like it jumps from like civil war where they're like. They like talk, and then they fight. To then they're just together in Infinity War and I don't know. Yeah, it is kind of weird how they jump from Civil War where he's literally keeping her under house arrest and she buries him in the earth to them in bed together. It's kind of weird, but no, Civil War. That's not the end where he where she puts him underground. Uh, he like uh, cradles her at the end of the battle at the airport, and they like apologize to each other. Oh, oh I must have forgot that part. Um. Yeah, anyway, so I also, I noticed that Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was on HBO Max, so I've been watching that. Um, It's really funny. I forgot how funny it was. Uncle Phil's dead. Um, And I I also forgot that the original Aunt Viv got recast. And I I looked it up and, like, they had, like, major disputes offset, so. Hmm. Um, For gaming, so we've been playing the Hunter game. Hunter, Mm -hmm. Call of the Wild. It's fun, yeah. Um, it's a yeah, little I, frustrating I, it's, sometimes. It can be frustrating, but I don't know. Like, it's one of those games where, because it has, it's it's not like so much of the mass-produced crap that's put out, which is what I think makes it fun. Yeah, like it's, it's not. It's oddly it's not therapeutic like the, to walk around the fields and stuff. It's very beautiful until you get killed by a water buffalo. Do you guys um, have um, yeah. anything else? For gaming or around it? Um, I'm trying to think about, like, there hasn't been a ton of news or any. Oh, um, Ubisoft is supposedly rolling out new content for all of its titles. So, Breakpoint, Division 2, and uh, For Honor are all supposedly getting new content in 2021. But. They've been very mum on what that content is as if it's real content or if it's like, we added a new side mission. Side but, mission, more like things you could buy, crates, that sort of shit. Yeah, like so, yeah. but supposedly they're doing that. They did a, like a thing for Breakpoint. They did a thing for for Honor and they did a thing for Division 2 saying, we are, we, and they like have put out a bunch of surveys. Like, what would the community like to see? And the fact that they're putting out a survey is what makes me think they have no plan. Yeah, um, they've been they've been having a really bad track record this last like two years. All right, um, moving on to trailers, we got the Justice League new yeah. trailer, Snyder Cut. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, so I've got this article here that says uh, ten biggest reveals. So let's talk about them. So there's Superman scream at the start of the trailer. I liked that. Mm-hmm. Well, it's they're saying it could be in reference to Luther's words, like the bell has been rung, like that's the bell that brings yeah. dark side. I don't know. Um, return to nightmare. We saw that the nightmare yeah, sequence. Uh, we see some of apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fine. Steppenwolf's new look, which is like whatever (laughs) um cyborg gets an upgrade he's got like a couple new things that he's doing (laughs) uh superman's resurrection which we knew so Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. We'll see. Um, we see Iris West, which is like footage that I've already seen somewhere before. Yeah, it was like leaked. Yeah. Yeah. There's the Dark Knight Returns Batmobile in it. Yep. Which is like mm-hmm. a tank, basically. Whatever. Um, Cyborg had a vision. Snyder has strongly hinted that something big happens when Cyborg touches the mother boxes. Um, it's kind of it's kind of funny how if there's going to be anything big in that movie revolving around him, it's just going to be bittersweet with all the shit that's been happening in real life with him. Well, whatever. Um, and then the biggest thing at the end is <laughs> Joker, Joker shows up. <laughs> Dude, so, he said the meme. He said the meme society. line. We live in a society. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, was that meme such a big deal? Because yeah, most people, it was. It, it was, was a re- big deal. It was really big a couple of years ago. But it's from Seinfeld. Like, well, it, well, it no, grew to popularity when the Heath actual Ledger's Joker movie Joker. came out. It was from Heath Ledger's Joker. No, well, that's Everett's right. But originally, what happened is there was this meme. There was this meme format that was really popular on like Facebook and Reddit. Where it was Heath Ledger's Joker and it says, we live in a society, and then it would be like some observation, like where it makes more sense to buy bombers than books. like. But then like it slowly just became like making fun of people who posted that meme. So there would be like, we do live in a society though, and it would be like just like a picture of like a, like a deformed Joker, and it just became like this meta commentary it was really popular on reddit a few years ago like really popular and it's so funny hearing him say it uh, i started laughing i started laughing out loud i mean he looks better without the damaged no, tattoo on doesn't. his head he doesn't look better yes he does this is an improvement from fucking suicide squad no he doesn't they're just kind you of think he looks better with Ledger. damaged on it i think he looks stupid both ways yeah, but this is like this is better than him having. He's hair. wearing like SWAT armor. I read somewhere that this was specifically reshot. This is not part of the original Zack Snyder image. This is something he specifically so, did. Does he put the makeup on like that around his mouth? I hope so. I hope we get a scene of him doing it. I hope the whole scene with him and Batman is him doing it, and then he's like, "We live in a society, Batman." <laughs> They're living in the apocalypse, and he takes the time to go find face makeup. But, like, do you see how he's applied it? I, uh, what do you mean? Because, like, it makes sense for Heath Ledger's Joker. Like, when you look at he, he, him, you go, yeah, he intentionally put his makeup to look like a smile. So what? what is, uh, he, what is, uh, what's his name, Jared Leto doing with that makeup? I don't like, fucking know. Hey, his I'll, Joker's I'll, horrible. I'm just gonna run, rub red all over around the lips, like... Just like around it, so that let, people let me know smear that that's lipstick my mouth. all over a wall and smash my face into it. Like, what is he communicating with that look? Uh, he's communicating that Heath Ledger's Joker was superior, and he wants to try and emulate him the best he can. I I'm interested in this movie just for the pure novelty of it, but like I'm not one of the haters. But like this trailer wasn't very good. Um, it, it's a lot I, I of mean, stuff we've already seen, and then at the end, it's like. Jared Leto's Joker, and I'm supposed to be excited for that? Like, that's the big, like, boom. You didn't see this coming. Like, who cares? He I sucks. Th- this trailer actually made me excited simply because I'm ex- – yeah, I guess it's what you said, the novelty. I'm excited to see, like, the movie. <laughs> it's just something new. Like, well, not even new. It's just different. <sighs> Imagine like if this gets popular, then people are going to start asking for the Suicide Squad re-release. The they Iron Cut. Are. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure that that's not going to be good, from what I've heard. No, I don't. I don't want to see that. I don't care. No, I um, don't want to see more of Joker because that's pretty much all that is. Yeah. Um, remember, remember he said like there's enough footage to shoot an entire extra movie. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I trust him. Uh, <laughs> Let's go to let's go to some news because some of this is relevant. So the Josh Whedon thing has continued. This time it's not yeah. Ray Fisher, but um, a lot of the Buffy people and Angel, mm-hmm. they're now coming out against them. Uh, Charisma Carpenter opened up about abuse she allegedly suffered on the set of hit TV series, courtesy of the Avengers director Josh Whedon. That's uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The actress described her traumatizing experience. Working with the filmmaker detailing his abuse of power, 
like calling her fat while she was pregnant and pitting the show stars against each other. Um, you know what's interesting about this whole thing? Just before you go on, it seems like like I was expecting. It, it, basically, the accusations are he's just a dick. So anyway, uh, yeah, more and more people are like coming out in support, like not saying like yeah, it was he did it to me too, but just in support. He seems like a dick. I I want to know what the crime was though. Yeah, because it, it kind of seems because I've read a lot of these claims, and like. There's no, like, he touched me inappropriately. And there's no, like, he, like, was racist or he was, like... It just I mean, seems he like he's a dick. shouldn't be calling pregnant people fat. No, that's absolutely fucked up. And he's a dick. But, like, he... he like, HR could talk to him about that. I don't know. I mean, yeah. they didn't. They should have. But I don't... I mean, did she report it then? I don't know. Um, but, like, where's the crime that we're like, I know. fuck him? Like, we... Like, we're more... Yeah. This Calling is, someone fat isn't inherently like illegal, but it's still disrespectful. Like we're way worse on people who have done much worse. I right, we're way more lenient on people that have done much worse. Um, what else? All right, so Snyder Cut Design. So they officially hired Boss Logic. You know he does the fan art stuff. Yeah. They Warner Brothers hired Boss Logic to do a character poster, and so he did Green Lantern and Martian Manhunter on the poster. So people are like, wait, is there, are these the official designs? Because this is officially commissioned. Like, it's official art for the right. movie. So you can see it if you want. I mean, it looks like... It doesn't look like anything, to be honest. It, it's exactly what you would expect. You can't really tell who whose face is, is what. But you can see it's Martian Manhunter. He's got a weird-shaped head. And Green Lantern is, like, really small. And he looks like the comic. So, And it's not in color, so you can't really even see... Like, yeah. Um, let me think. Uh, here's another one. Zack Snyder's Justice League director admits handling of global release schedule has not been amazing. But isn't Zack Snyder the director? <laughs> um, yeah, there has been, you know, not amazing work done with the distribution of the movie. I don't know why that is. I honestly couldn't put my finger on it. I don't want to make it seem like there's some sort of conspiracy out there. I don't think so. I think part of the problem is no one saw the movie coming. I think that the normal window or normal way people in Hollywood distribute movies is they understand when the movie gets made that it's going to have to be distributed. Normally, they have like a two-year window to figure all that out. The problem is this happened in six months and came to life. It caught everyone off guard. Sure. Yeah. Makes I mean, sense. I don't know. I, I like that it's coming to HBO Max. I just Is he talking about the whole four-hour movie versus episode thing? I thought he was talking about the international. Because uh, isn't it only releasing in the U.S. or something? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it is. Let me look that up. Um, here's some other HBO Max stuff about Harry Potter. I won't add anything to what you've already put out there, which is that we recently heard a spinoff about the Harry Potter world uh, for HBO Max. He says, you are correct in that there are no deals in place. I would go back to a more global statement on franchises. I think DC, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, Warner Brothers has decades of important uh, individual properties. Harry Potter being one of those. It's great advantage for Warner Media, and of course we want to use them in any way that makes either viewers, subscribers, fans happy. So he's not committing to any of that. Sounds like there is something going on. Um, I'm kind of burnt out on the whole Wizarding World thing right now. I'm not bit. burnt out. It's just that they did a bad job. If they did a good job, I'd be fine with it. Um, here's Jared Leto on the rat thing. Remember he gave Margot Robbie a dead oh, rat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he says, <laughs> Wait, I never see. gave Margot Robbie a dead rat. That's not true. I actually gave her. I found this place in Toronto that had great vegan cinnamon buns, and that was a very common thing. Robbie actually okay. confirmed in 2016 that Leto, Leto gave her a live rat that she kept as a pet. Viola Davis, who played Amanda Waller, said he sent Margot Robbie a black rat that was still alive in a box. She screamed, and then she kept it. Uh, I don't. I who cares. Okay. The whole thing just sounds. And I just looked it up to confirm. So, it's only coming out on HBO Max, but HBO Max isn't available outside of the U.S., like in the U.K. or Australia. So, but do and they there have HBO been, Go or something? No, there hasn't been any confirmation. Like, there's some rumor it might appear on something called Now uh, TV. Okay. Huh. Yeah, they sure screwed that up. Gonna pirate it anyway. Um, here's some other crap. 
Mission Impossible 7 and 8 are no longer shooting back to back. Um Tom Cruise has officially lost his mind. And it's and it's mainly because of release date changes, not because of COVID necessarily, but because like it's now coming out at different times, so they're uh they're just okay. yeah, it doesn't have to be back to back, whatever. Um here is some MCU DC or sorry, MCU Disney Star Wars stuff. Uh, Craven the Hunter, the rumor is that Keanu Reeves may have already passed on the role months ago. Hmm. Good. And if not Craven, or if not Keanu Reeves, then here are 10 people that they think could do it. <laughs> Henry yeah. Cavill. Uh... He, could, he could do it. He could do it. I don't know that he <laughs> wants to. Luke Evans. I, that's a good pick. I like him yeah, a lot. Yeah, that's a good pick. Um. David Diggs, you might have seen him. I guess he played Thomas Jefferson in Hamilton. I don't know. Um, I didn't see that, but he was in that other movie that I don't remember either. I, I really haven't seen. It David was like Diggs. he was like a rapper, garbage man. Uh, Manu Bennett, he he's Deathstroke from the CW. He could do uh, it. That that'd be good, I guess. Jason Momoa. Nah. I think he should stay away from that. Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, nah, nah. Uh, you know what? No, that, that that's a possibility. Nah, he's too old. He's too American. Uh, Idris Elba. Uh, okay, yeah, I could see that. Pedro Pascal. I can't see that. I could see that. I is I still Craven prefer. The um, yeah, Craven the Hunter. Who is the one that Luke Evans is still the best one so far? Joe Manganiello, whatever. No. Joel Kinnaman. I don't like his face. I don't want to see him. Uh, no, no, yeah. not Joel Kinnaman. Gina Carano compared being a Republican to being a Jewish person G- under Nazi oppression. <laughs> and then so she got fired from Star Wars and The Mandalorian, and they've also canceled her action figures. Yeah. Which means that they're now worth a lot. <laughs> So like That's whatever so they funny. have, whatever uh, Cara Dune figures you have are now like worth a lot. <laughs> Get fucked. Yeah, and then she is now actually like she got offered to make a movie. Yeah, but do you know who it's with? Ben Shapiro. Yeah, I don't. I is don't see that. It? I don't know. That's why it. I don't think it's a real thing. Like I don't. She responded after she got fired, The Daily Wire is helping make one of my dreams to develop and produce my own film come true. I cried out and my prayer was answered. I am sending out a direct message of hope to everyone living in fear of cancellation by the totalitarian mob. (laughs) I have only just begun using my voice, which is now freer than ever before, and I hope it inspires others to do the same. They can't cancel us if we don't let them. Um, See, it's... Yeah, it's interesting because, like, I'd say on this podcast we tend to be like more or less against cancel culture, and we think it's stupid. But she's an idiot. I don't want her to be canceled. I don't Can think I, she should be canceled. I I mean I agree with you. The problem is I also hate her character, so I'm kind of glad she's gone. But I don't hate her character either. She's just a bad character. Like it's just bad. You know what's kind of funny? So what you just said exist. about a what you just said about the action figure increase. So I just looked up on eBay what her Black Series figure is going for. Typically, I've seen this figure go for $20 online. It's now $274. <laughs> that is insane. Um, the thing is, like, why should she be kicked off the Mandalorian for that? Well, because Disney, Disney's argument is we're a family-friendly brand that can fire you for any reason we want, which technically they can but mm-hmm. yeah they can but why for what she said because she's like I feel oppressed I mean the real without trying to be controversial the real reason is because you know her she she pissed off people that's the only reason she pissed off she she, she pissed off com- Twitter if yeah. you're not on Twitter I, but, you don't even know yeah but my point is that like the but we've seen time and time again that Twitter forces like real action despite it being like not a real thing. 
With corporations, yeah. Yes. But like, so I just don't see the connection. Like, she makes a weird tweet, and like, so she can't play that awful character anymore. <laughs> like, that's justice. And now she's making this other movie, and is like, no, she shouldn't be allowed to like, like, wait. So what is canceling? Canceling means she doesn't get to be in Star Wars, but she still gets to be an actress. So did you really accomplish anything? I don't know. Well, cancel cultures. I suspect the people who canceled her do not want her to make anything ever again. But the problem is they can't like, yeah, force that. And also, it's like, no it's one like cares. bringing back blacklisting. Like you make one mistake or you do one bad thing and you're banned from the entertainment industry for life. Yeah. But like, no one's gonna watch this other sh- movie that she's making. And like, that's kind of how it should be. Like, let the people decide. The problem is we also have a bunch of morons. Like as we've seen. So like when you when you have someone out there that's saying stupid things, people should have the choice to like not listen to them. But then someone like Trump comes along and like rallies them up, and now you've got all this like terrible poisoning going on. Mm-hmm. That's that's the argument in favor of cancellation is like she shouldn't have um, a platform. Yeah, but but I just I don't know. It's like it's not really a victory. Like the character was so bad <laughs> that we really didn't lose anything. <laughs> Like, all he did was she lost her bank account. But, like, I don't know that well, that should happen just because someone tweets something you don't agree with. It's not like, like she said kill Jewish it. people or something. She said, I know. I feel right. oppressed is what she really said. Yeah, and, and like, people, yeah. well, there you know, there's a bit of a double standard there because, like, Ray Fisher says he feels, like, where well, he hinted that he felt oppressed. And there's a lot of people who were like, we need to investigate this. Yeah, but he this. didn't mention and Nazis, though. That's the- <laughs> No, he didn't, of course. But my point here is, like, to give you an example of cancel culture. So, like, Donald Trump was kicked off Twitter, which I think a lot of people would agree is, like, yeah, that kind of had to happen. Um, right. But there's also the question, he was trying to get a book deal done, and there was this big movement, like, he's not allowed to write a book. So Well, I, well there's a precedent because of O.J. Simpson. Right, I know. You can't profit but, off of your crimes. No, of course. But like the the thing the the argument that I've been seeing about um with with the actress for Cardoon is that um well, you know, she's she like she's spewing the same type of stuff that like Trump people spew and like the, so she'll like be supporting the lie or something like that. Yeah, that's a very dangerous thing because, like, that could happen to us. Like, we're not super hardcore on the Twitter side. So, well, let's just say they get rid of all the Gino Caranas. Like, who's next? Like, No, I know. Well, this is something we've talked about. Like, imagine imagine if we become a really popular podcast in, like, 30 years and something like this happens and we don't, like, immediately come out and say, this is the worst thing that ever happened. Instead, I'm, like, sitting here like, wait, so how, what, what is the purpose? Like, what did we actually gain from this? Like, how is it related? And then they cancel us because we don't tell the line. Like, SoundCloud yeah. is like, we're kicking you off. No, I agree. It would be horrible. And then, you know what would happen? We would get a deal from, like, Ben Shapiro where he's like, I'll host your podcast. And then we're, like, radicalized if we agree. Yeah. Yeah, now we're, like, on the extreme. I don't know. It, it, it's going weird. Like, people think... People, like, I want the two-party system in the sense that there needs to be, like, a back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, and what people don't realize is, like, even though the conservative party is, like, basically imploding, there there will... It's going to... The, the left will split into two. Yeah, because you... Well, you can already see that. Because, like, yeah. Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, they're not... Yeah. The same. So... I don't know. This is weird. I hate all this. Like people, like or I think I feel like the president, like Biden, should come out and just start make some type of plan for social media. Like he needs to start guiding the population. Like this is unhealthy. Like we need to stop. Like stop arguing with people on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know. But once you start down that road, it's going to lead to he's trying to take away our online freedoms. Well, he yeah, but see that's the thing. You don't actually like take it away. But you have to start like we have to start educating people like there should be things in school about proper social media because it's a mess. Like, yeah, this is, and it this just is gets worse control. with each generation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Like, you know, if it wasn't for all these articles talking about it, I would have never known that she said it because I don't no, go on Twitter. <laughs> so, yeah. and or also throw things you, out of proportion. Even if you did go on Twitter, you have to be in a very specific part of Twitter to see this. Also, which is like the angry outrage. Twitter. I'm not interested in what Gina Carano has to say, like, on a daily basis. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah. Who is who are these people? Like this is unhealthy. Like who are you that you're following Gina Carano? I mean, or, ironically, or it, I think it, I, I think the people that like cancel her and freak out, a portion of them, I think, are the same people that we complain about whenever we talk about WandaVision or Star Wars. Those super fans that like yeah. live well, vicariously through those people. I don't know that they're the same people, but yeah, it's it's just people that live on social media. Well, yeah. And what I bet is that a lot of these people are people who had no knowledge of her, interest of her, or didn't care. And then, like, they, like, they search for when these people say these things, and then they can, like... What, earn clout some... off of it? Yeah, you, you tweet, like, look at what she said. This has to stop. And you get, like, 500 retweets. Like... Yeah. I mean, I, like... I see what you mean, like... Well, what, what like, if I, like, if I... Like, if I don't care what she says, like, I don't, personally, I don't feel offended by what she said at all, but... And if I were to Jewish, on, by the way, if so I were to go, to yeah, say that. If I were to go on Twitter and be like, oh my god, like, these things are so hurtful to me, I demand that she get fired, like, and try to earn that shit, like, that would work? Yeah. I think Jesus. it does. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be just you, but enough people. It doesn't even have to be that many people, but it's there. I don't know, for some reason, the corporations, they're, like, terrified of that. Of the mob. They, and the articles. They I listen think... to the loud minority, and they don't want to be associated with the people that will lose them money because they think that loud minority are the people that are buying their well, product. They are right in the sense that, like, I don't ever want to be on the side of defending Gina Carano. Like, I'm asking questions about it, but I, if, like, if I was Disney, I wouldn't want to be like, well, how bad is what? She, like, how bad is it actually what she said? Like, I'm not defending it at all. I don't want to even touch that thing so you know what it's better to just get rid of these people who post these stupid things like we don't we don't really need her she's a shitty at character like we don't need it i mean but, have but you ever well, go on here's the like flip side of this right like these corporations they like get rid of her because they're like we we stand against this but it's like all these fucking companies are like using slave labor and sweatshops to make their products yeah. and like like they're like in china they're ca happily like going along with like the censorship and the like genocide and the like so it's like, and people don't get outraged over that. So, or they do, I, but like not to the same level. There's no response. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I saw the comparison. Uh, did you guys see that comparison where they're like, so Disney fires Gina Carano for making this comment, yet they, uh, they thanked someone in the, in the credits of Mulan for helping. Not like, not, there wasn't yeah, like was a slave wrangler, but like. No, they thanked, they thanked the, the, the board of Jing, Jing Jiang. Like the the government yeah, there, and, and, and they the shot in the province that, with the slave camps. Yeah, they shot. It's the same government that's like setting up the concentration camps yeah. for the Uyghurs. Yeah. So it's, it's all like about money. you know, Kia. Yeah, you're right, Kia. That's what it is. It's easy for them to fire her and make some like political points, or at, like like public points versus like doing something real. Because what are you actually so, getting I mean, out of it? Like she's a moron that that brought this attention on herself, and then it's like as Disney, if that was my company. I don't want someone like just doing that. Like, stop. We're trying to make TV shows and like make money off merchandise. And you're literally like causing people to boycott us or whatever you're going to do because you just had to say some stupid thing. Like what she said, even if you agree with her, like that was the dumbest way to say it. Like if you agree with her point, maybe if you're a Republican, and you feel like you can't express your racism or whatever. But like the way she said, like how could you, how could you compare being a Republican today to the Jews who got ripped out of their homes and put into concentration camps and exterminated? I, I okay. Versus I the Republicans I who I literally think, uh, stormed the capital. Yeah. <laughs> I, I forget what she said, but I think she was comparing the lead up to the the Nazis gassing the Jews. Like yeah, how but it was she was like it was their neighbors it. and kids before the soldiers. She, and it's like, no, she actually said it wasn't the soldiers. It was the neighbors. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's like, that's not true. The neighbors may have been involved, but the people who came for you were the soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, uh, the, the population did turn on them for sure. I mean, I, I may be wrong, but do you do see the irony sort of, right? Like she says that and then the people turn on her. 
<laughs> Everett, Everett, well, a she, Jewish man is defending her. She has a. I'm point. not. No, I'm not defending it. I'm just calling know, up the I'm irony. In it. She has a point in the sense that, yeah, you're like, I mean, for your beliefs, everyone around you will like dump on you, and but that's not. It's not really the same as why they were after yeah, the Jews. <laughs> people, people saying you're an idiot and being like, I think you're stupid, is different than being put in a concentration camp. Yeah, or, or being uh-huh. like your your bloodline is the reason our country is has like fallen behind her. <laughs> it's not the same at all. Yeah, and like I've been reading some of this, like you know, the same day she was dropped by her talent agency, and then she responded by being like, "Well, Pedro Pascal was able to make a similar post uh, without being fired," and like she was claiming double standard. Did um, he make a similar post? I, I no, I think he. I think she's referring to his support of like Black Lives Matter or like being proud, like proud of his heritage do you remember when she pulled all that shit with like the the transgender groupings and people got mad at her then too well she was right about that i I think i forget what she said exactly she was that people were people were getting mad at her for not putting her pronouns in her twitter bio oh yeah she she, was mocking them she was mocking them yeah i thought you meant the transgender mma situation no i'm talking about like the twitter stuff there was an mma situation yeah, there was a woman. There was a man who became a woman and just started beating the fuck out of women. Oh, oh, well, I wasn't referring to that at all. So I, I assumed she had like so, said something about that because obviously, like, she was a female MMA fighter. So, like, that's a big deal. You're fighting a man, basically. So mm-hmm. same bone structure. All those years of like strength building that only a man could do. Like a woman can't match that. And then, and then. I don't know if she got a sex change or what, but eventually she got beat by a woman, but that's only because she sucked. The the transgender fighter was bad, but she still had the incredible power that was like literally shutting people's lights off with one touch. Um, I mean, that's so crazy. Like I'm about 180 pounds. Can you imagine if I fought a 180 pound woman? Yeah, it would be disastrous. Like the difference with that would be, it's insane. Um, just the body fat difference alone. Um, Anyway, enough about her. Like, she's a moron. I'm glad she's gone. I hope that everyone else on that show gets kicked off, too. <laughs> like, she's Pedro Pascal? Yeah, end the show. He 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 gave up uh, Yoda. Like, just, it's over now. What is he going to do? I've had enough. Oh, well, by the way, Gita Carano, I guess after her firing, she posted, uh, it's a clip of Frodo crying with a quote from the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> what? <laughs> I wish the ring had never come to me. I wish that none of this had happened. Gandalf, so do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All you have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to you. J.R.R. Tolkien, The Lord of the Rings. Wow. <laughs> and it's just a video of Frodo crying. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. Um, talking about Avengers Endgame and Cap returning the stones. Here are the directors. One thing that's clear that Anthony and I have discussed. I don't know what we've discussed this. I don't know that we've discussed this publicly at all. Cap would have to travel back to the main timeline. That's something that, yes, he would have been in a branch reality, but he would have to travel back to the main timeline to give that shield to Sam Wilson. We knew that, right? Yes. I mean, mean, that's the the main timeline. That was the whole ending of the movie. In our internal logic that we defined in the room, That was the choice that we made. Based on everything that happened, he would have been in a branch reality and then had to have shifted over to this. So jumped from one to the other and handed the shield off. This means that if Steve and Peggy had children, the hero had to leave them behind on another world in order to meet up with Sam and Bucky to pass his shield onto the former. So like everyone's saying, like maybe he, uh, you know, maybe he did stop. 9-11 9-11 and all that. You remember how the, everyone was criticizing him? For yeah. Him? Okay, but that the, that doesn't solve still the cop out. many problems of that entire concept. So I was, I was reading a thread on Reddit about people who believe that him returning the stones would make a good miniseries on Disney+. Plus. Oh, God. They and think then, everything will make a good miniseries. And it's, and like, again, the directors, they need, someone should push them on this, like, What creates the new timeline? Is it changing anything or is it changing the stones? Because it sounds like it's it's taking the stones because in uh, 
the ancient one's diorama, when that happens, that's when the new branch starts. And then Ruffalo specifically says, you have to put the stone back at the exact moment you took it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it seems like it would be the stones that did that. So like when he returns this, each stone, he's closing off the branches. So then what branch was he living in? Right. And also, how did he inject the ether at the same time that Rocket Into was Jane. taking it? Yeah. I'm assuming if how he do had you, to... How do you return the Soul Stone at the same time Black Widow was killing herself? <laughs> it I doesn't mean, yeah, her, work. Her corpse would still no. be on the ground. It doesn't work. Or, or Okay, yeah, let's just say she, like it was after she died and then Hawkeye got it. How do you give it to him? You just have two soul stones at that point. Like, yeah, you'd have to, you'd have to. Yeah, you couldn't do it because you never see him actually take it. He wakes up like, how do you do that? I mean, he I, gives I th- it the red skull. Like, it doesn't make sense. Well, all that matters is that they exist in the universe that they're taken from. I don't think it I matters mean, necessarily the circumstance. So when they he were says, in. you have to put it back at the exact moment. You, to you, that means vague vague time and place well remember what the ancient one said she said when the stone disappears is when like all the bad stuff starts happening when the stone is in the no, universe it doesn't start happening the stone disappears and that means that they don't have it to fight thanos mm-hmm. which means that they die later well no it was remember she she was explaining to bruce banner that the the infinity stones make up the flow of time when you remove one it creates a dark branch reality where yeah, everything is unbalanced. Says, no, no, no. But she didn't say that. She said, without our chief weapon in this world, we fall to the darkness like in like far before, like yeah, longer she's before. She's saying that taking the stone dooms them because they can't use it. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. Maybe, maybe you're right. But still, like the point still stands. Like you don't have to necessarily have it in the same situation. Like, yeah, you give the time, you give the time stone back to the ancient one. Uh, if you if you can't give the soul stone back to the red skull, you just yeet the thing into okay, the, okay, the but vacuum you're, of space. You're not, you're not thinking about it practically. So you take the stone, right? You've mm-hmm. taken the stone in a way. So what triggers the alternate timeline? Um, the moment an you event touch it? take an an event taking place, like the butterfly effect or something, like an event taking place that strings off from the original timeline. So. So, what would that be in that sense, like? If you take the time stone and she wasn't going to use it like that moment, but she might use it in five minutes, does oh, that mean, then start the branch at five minutes later? Well, technically it wouldn't matter because if it appears at the same time it was taken, then technically it never left at all, right? So Yeah, but you can't do that. You can't appear at the same time it was taken for some of those. Like the soul stone, how, how do you how Well, do the, you soul, the soul stone had no real effect on anything until Infinity War when it was found. Like yeah, it was just sitting there on Vormir the entire time. two people died. I, I know, this shit's really fucking confusing. So, so like, <laughs> I mean, if you say, like, it didn't affect anything, like, what does affect mean? Well, okay, if you're comparing, like, the Soul Stone to the Space Stone, the Tesseract was, like, the main part, one of the main parts of Avengers. Um, if you take that away at the moment when they took it, so like in that case or whatever, which uh, the second question would be like, how do you turn it back into the Tesseract? But if you take that away, then that changes a whole lot of like the things that happen. Like, but if you take away the um, the Soul Stone, no one was on Vormir. The up until Infinity War, no one was on Vormir. No one found it. It basically didn't exist. So. It had no bearing on the timeline at that moment. So you're saying that the alternate timeline doesn't happen until Thanos shows up with Gamora later and then realizes that it's not there? I mean... And then a new timeline is created? Well, I guess. I mean, I would assume, like, the difference would be... (laughs) The difference would be you you take the Soul Stone, you give it back, and it's just sitting there. So the difference would be when Thanos and Gamora show up and he doesn't have to sacrifice her, he just takes it. But why would right? it why would it just be sitting there? Well, I mean, are you just is 
Is he going to give it back to Red Skull and he's going to like put it know. back up into the sky who, who or wherever else? Put it there in the hiding? first place. Who gave it to Red Skull? I don't Skull know. In the first that, place? That's never explained. Yeah, and so it's like it it's never explained. But but that's not so. Okay, but like what I said before is like so if he puts if Captain if Steve puts the stone back, it's like okay the stone's here. So like later in the timeline when someone comes to need it, everything's like fine. Okay, so then Thanos comes back. Somehow the stone is like in that weird puzzle that you have to kill yourself in. But let's just say that that the stone is gone in that alternate timeline. So um, like Black mm-hmm. Widow took it and that timeline it continues. It's already a different time. Well, actually, okay, it's, she took it, but it's the same timeline still, right? Is that what you're saying? Are it's- you assuming that when the stone is taken, that the timeline continues on as if it wasn't there? No, you're, that's saying, what you're saying right? I'm saying that it that the taking no. the stone is what triggers it. But you said well, it, sa- it required an event, so it would. I, I'm saying when you take the stone, okay. Theoretically, I think what you're saying is when you take the stone and the rest of time moves on without it, that's what causes the change, yeah. and things start to branch off from there. But what I'm saying is, by the, when you put the stone back, that future never happens. So. What? Yeah, I understand. I understand. But what I'm asking you is, so in that main timeline where the Soul Stone is now gone, uh huh, and then and then Thanos shows up in five years or whatever, and he wants to take it and it's not there. When does the new reality start? What triggers? Well, the I'm new assuming reality? that's when the new reality but starts. What? Like oh. what triggers the new reality? What triggers the new reality is if all the other Infinity Stones are there and he goes for the Soul Stone and it's not there from that moment where he doesn't kill Gamora, he doesn't get the uh, Soul Stone, he can't complete the Infinity Gauntlet. That's the start of the new event. Because I'm assuming nobody else comes for the Soul Stone. But that never happens because they put the Soul Stone back. So everything happens the way it normally does anyway. Now, how do you put the Soul Stone back? That's what I'm saying. You can still have that future where things are different. Either he finds it there and doesn't have to kill Gamora, or something happens that... With movie magic, where but he gives he it back to Red to Skull. If he kill Gamora, wouldn't that create a new alternate timeline? That's what I'm saying. Either he figures out a way to put it back in the puzzle where everything normally happens the way it should be, or he leaves it there. Something That's where the difference starts. He leaves it there in that puddle. He puts it somewhere else where it doesn't have to be earned, and the new timeline starts not where the stone doesn't exist, but where Thanos gets it from different means and he doesn't have to make a sacrifice for okay, it. Okay, I kind of like this a little better because the way the movie portrays it, it like w- they say literally like once you remove one of the stones it creates another timeline. So what you're saying is it has to actually affect its its absence has to actually affect the timeline for it to create another timeline. So then you could theoretically close it within a vague amount of time as long as it's before the incident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's what's going on this is the whole time travel thing does that apply really to all the stones though like like jane foster mm-hmm. rocket ambushes her and then yes. injects her with the ether and removes it i mean aside from the fact that that's a plot hole because that was literally what they were trying to do in the dark world and couldn't do it and he just uh-huh. like does it in two seconds so he removes the stone and then isn't she going to wake up and like be like, what the hell happened? And like freak out. And so like that's already a brand new timeline. So what you have to do is you have to come back and stop Rocket from taking it. Mm-hmm. And then like it's in her body and then you don't have to re- – like you then you just have an extra ether. Well, that's one that I can see – that's one that I can see causing a difference. So, so let's say you have two hypothetical – futures so rocket goes stabs her with that little thing he gets the ether and leaves goes back to the main timeline to fight thanos you now have a jane foster that doesn't have an ether in her body but is still on asgard if the events of the normal timeline take place without it malekith shows up there's no ether any number of things could happen she's freaking out because she just got stabbed by a raccoon but then at the same moment that he left Captain America comes back and stabs her back with the ether and injects it back crazy. in her body. And technically, also, um, well, technically things should continue the way they should because now she has the ether. So, but they're forgetting the fact that she just saw this guy come out of nowhere and yeah. her mindset's different. She might make different actions. That's where that change would happen. Yeah. 
Okay. I mean, I guess that works better than originally. So I always knew that Captain America went back to the normal timeline at the end. Well, yeah. Like, it's obvious. They explain the fact that time doesn't work that way anyway. It wouldn't be like an alternate version of him going back in time and getting older. He had but, to have come back. But so, so I think going back to what we said at the beginning, in what branch, like what, how did he create a new branch reality? He takes the Tesseract back. Because uh, remember, they didn't take the Tesseract from New York. They failed. They got it from that warehouse. So, like that's uh, so, okay, Camp Lehigh or whatever. Let's say this. He goes back to the 1940s. He lives for 30 years, and then in the 1970s, he replaces the stone that is taken from, that is taken by Tony, right? Mm-hmm. So, did he close his own reality? Well, I, what I was, in my well, mind, what I was thinking the main is... Timeline. So, he went to a different 1940. Well... No, he had to have gone to the 1940. Or no, it wasn't okay. No, um, no. Was yeah. that 1940? That wasn't 1940. No. That was like. It was after the war. He, he went back to the main timeline. He had to, and then he can create a new reality. But how did he do it? Hold on, I'm just I'm confirming something. One sec. Emerson, what do you think? <sighs> I mean, the whole thing. This it's just endless plot holes. Mm. Now, it's 1970 when they go to that. Uh, the, yeah, when they go- I know, but he goes back to the 40s with what's her name, doesn't he? She's young. Uh, she's not old. When at the end of the movie, I, uh, she would be. If that's 1970 at the end of the movie, she would be like, assuming she's like, let's say, 27 in World War II, she would be like 57 in the 1970s. Yeah, no, we see her. We see what she looks like then. She has gray hair. She is. Uh, He's in the 1940s. There's 1940 music and cars and. I also, think, he wouldn't age um, that much if he went to the 1970s and then came back. It would only be 50 years. He wouldn't be an old man. I, okay, here's what I think happened. So he can't go back. He he returns all six Infinity Stones first, and then from that point on, there's no obligation really to go back to the present. I think from that point on, then he goes back to the 40s and lives out his life. He doesn't have to sure. wait to return any stones. But going back to the 40s in that sense, after he gave all the stones, means that there's no more alternate realities. Well, except the one that he's currently living in. But which one is that? Because he returned the That's stones. That's actual reality. Well, well, no, not necessarily. Um, he's there he, at the end, though. So it's yeah. his reality. So that means okay. he always... Okay, well, here, here, let me try to visualize this. So there's three points to this. Point one is he returns all six Infinity Stones flawlessly somehow without affecting anything. Uh, so all realities to, are closed now. So it's all the their realities are closed, and then everything is fixed, supposedly. Point two is from the sixth Infinity Stone, he then travels to 1940 or 44, or whatever, after World War II. He's already frozen in the ice somewhere else on the Earth, but he shows up there, and he sees Peggy, and he lives out however many years until he's an old man. That's in point two. Timeline. Yeah. In the new timeline. But that's no, no. The, the How is it a new timeline, timeline though? It's a new timeline because if it were the original timeline, he'd be frozen in ice, right? Yeah, but he is frozen he in is. ice. Otherwise, yeah. he would have not otherwise he would have never done anything and everything that initially happened didn't happen. But are you guys not seeing it There's like two if he, Steve Rogers in the reality that he lived with Peggy? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like one of them yeah. is still frozen in ice. Yeah, so after winning create, World War II. But when he goes to the 1940s, after he closed all the alternate timelines, he's in the main timeline. Still. Well, I'm not that, like I'm not done. I'm not to my point three. Point two is he goes back to 1940, lives out his however many years with Peggy. After he's done, his kids graduate college or whatever, he leaves. Point three is he from that branch timeline goes back to the original timeline where he left as an old man, and then interacts with sam and but that Bucky. the way it's right. the way it's portrayed is that he lived out his entire life and now is just at the spot where it needs to be he travels to that spot but yeah, that he physically uh, walks there but that's no, that would be no, impossible he, no, he time travels to that exact moment yeah that's what i'm saying it'd be impossible for him to walk there because no, I'm with you on that he he travels from a separate timeline to the timeline where he gives sam the shield at that moment mm. he arrives at the bench and he specifically timed it. It was like right after he went as a young person, he shows up again as an old person immediately. He did that on purpose. 
But where did he come from? A different timeline. And where did that new timeline begin? Is the question. Well, let's think for a minute. From the 1940s, let's assume he went from the 1940s to 2020. How many years would that be? Well, it doesn't matter how many years. It's like, where did he begin in 1940? Where did that timeline begin? How did he create it? Did he have to like, he would have had to have done something, by your logic, done something significant to alter the timeline. I don't think there is a new timeline. But they're saying he, there is. Well, but they're, they're, but that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm trying. That's where I'm trying. Like, where's the thing that he did? And that's why I went. That's how this whole conversation started. Where I said, if he was in a new timeline, what constitutes creating a new timeline? Because Everett's saying it's like a significant event. And if the well, no, I, are gone, I was I was referring specifically to the Infinity Stones. In this situation, right. the stones are out of it completely. Right. You're just talking about going back in time and living in a new timeline. Right. In that so, case, you can say it's like the multiverse theorem. An endless amount of alternate oh realities okay, this exist. Is just, no, yeah, but that's... Yeah. So no, I, I, this don't, is all stupid. I still don't think it works. I, I'm not sure. Um, but I always knew that he was traveling. I just assumed it was one of the branches that he returned the, the stone in, and he just stayed in it after he, like, you know... So, like, what happens? You put the Tesseract back, and you don't just disappear. You are still there. But, but that would mean that he'd have to... Uh, this conversation is never going to end. This is, well, also, this is like, the problem with time travel. This is the problem with time travel. It's not um, logical. So if, Remember, that's the whole basis for the Loki show is the fact that he never went back and got the Tesseract. So if, if, he, if he technically closes – see, the problem is I think we're thinking is like he closes the timeline, but he doesn't actually close it. He actually just makes it the same as the main timeline. In other words, it, the same things play out, but he's there. Because Thanos is still going to do his thing and all that stuff is still going to happen. Life is still going to happen the way that it was unless he like changes 9-11 or whatever. But as far as the timelines, like he's in the timeline where the Tesseract was taken, but he put it back. So it's going to play out the same way. Mm-hmm. Right? But so he's still there. And that means that he lives Technically, in that. Technically, yes. He lives in that timeline and then he jumps back over to the original timeline. That's the only way it makes sense. Um. There's one more piece of news, Black Widow. Kevin Feige is reportedly against the theatrical Disney Plus release. Um, Feige's opinion certainly carries considerable weight at Disney, but that doesn't mean the powers that be can't eventually convince Feige to change his mind or overrule him completely. Hmm. I say they should just do it. At this point, Like the movie is almost a year yeah, late. Just do it. Yeah, just rip the band-aid off. Do it. So um, next week, are we doing uh, Catch Me If You Can? Yep, that would be the yep. next one. Uh, we do – we want to make sure Godzilla vs. Kong is the 20th episode, right? Uh, or 200th uh, episode? My bad. I don't Wasn't remember. that what we talked about? Where Where is the uh, – Are we at the end right about... now? Cause... Um, um, I don't know. Well, we never did my game of smartass. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> Why don't you just say something? Why? I I just said it to you. No, because instead Everett used all his power talking about time travel, (laughs) and that conversation went on for about thirty minutes. Yeah, I still got my I got my mini game too. If you guys still want to do that. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um. But wait, let's figure out the episode thing for a second. All right. Yeah. Fine. We'll do that after then. So right now, this is episode. One ninety two. What day? One ninety two. Godzilla vs. Kong come out? Uh, let's see. March 31st. Okay. So we have one week, two week, so that would be 93, 94, 95, 96, 97. Why does it come out? Uh, why does it come out on a Wednesday? I don't know. Who knows? It's kind of odd. 98. Okay. So we need one extra thing in between. No, we need two. Two two extra things? You're sure? Because wouldn't well, because if it comes out on ninety eight and then episode ninety nine one ninety nine is our special thing, and then episode two hundred is Godzilla vs. Kong, right? Ninety seven would be on the twenty first. Okay. 
And then mm-hmm. the next one we would need a 98 and a 99. Okay, so what I think we decided we wanted to do was Godzilla 2014, and we also somewhere in there should rewatch Justice League. I agree. Didn't we say? Like in preparation Wasn't, for that. Weren't we going to make Justice League the 200th episode? I don't remember which one we wanted to do. I think that's what we were planning on, but. Yeah, I thought we were going to make Justice League the one. Oh, okay. yeah, we I thought gonna... you said Godzilla versus Kong. That's March 18th. That's oh, we're going to need a lot of extra episodes then. Okay, wait. So we're that would be 93, 94, 95. And that would put us at 96. So we need 97, 98, 99. So we have um we could do we could do little mini episodes for WandaVision. Sure. So that's there's three more of those and then one more for Justice League. Yeah. Well, that works. So Yeah. Yeah. That'll be fine. All right, uh, go ahead. What's your game, Everett? All right. Um, well, Kia, you're starting this week, so person, place, or thing. Person? Person. All right, you guys ready? Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Uh, I am extremely intelligent. My first appearance was in the fall of 1941. I am a master strategist and manipulator. I am overly obsessive. I occasionally use a scythe as a weapon. Red Skull? Nope. Well. I was a professor of psychology. (laughs) In the comics, I was briefly a member of the Sinestro Corps. I know what this is. I use various forms of gases. Scarecrow? Correct. Okay. Oh. All right. Emerson, what's next? Place or thing? Place. Place. All right, here we go. This location is constantly changing. It has appeared in two live-action films. Things that happen here do not affect the real world. Its creation was influenced by the works of mathematical painter M.C. Eschner and the fractal concept. It exists in a parallel dimension. If properly trained, a person can fold matter in this place. It has some ways, in some ways, been compared to the Upside Down from Stranger Things. Allows the practice of dangerous activities without the public's knowledge. Mirror Dimension? Correct. Okay. I didn't know if it had a different name. This is from Doctor Strange? Yeah, the Mirror Dimension. Nice job. All right. um, And then the last one is Thing. You guys ready? Yep. Here we go. These items are very rare. They are round in shape. If they existed in real life, they would be small enough to fit in your hand. This item first appeared in February of 2010. It can be crafted or found in the world. It can directly restore your health. It is one of the components needed to cure a zombie villager. It can be eaten. A golden apple? Correct. Is this a Minecraft question? Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck? Okay. I thought we did movie trivia. Well, it's anything that... It's either anything from our podcast or anything that we've all seen or played before. All right. We've all played Minecraft. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, too, am shocked by this shift, but I will take okay. the bonus question. <laughs> okay. Your bonus question is, how many variants of the golden apple are there in Minecraft? Define variant. How many versions are there? Two? <laughs> Correct. Okay. For no extra points, uh, what are they? Uh, so it's the golden apple and the like enchanted golden apple? Yeah. Correct. Nice. All right. So you got <laughs> three points. Kia got well, one. Wow, Kia. You, you really should have studied better on our Minecraft episode. You might have yeah. gotten this one. All right. <laughs> So currently the score right now is Emerson 9, Kia 7. But do you guys want to do my mini game that I prepared? Yeah. Is it going to be Minecraft okay. based? No, it's not Minecraft based. But so well, I think we were going to do this yesterday, but it's Monday. So yesterday was Valentine's Day. So I created a small little mini game for lucky? you guys. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> but um, thanks. Let's move on for that. So here, all I'm going to ask you guys is, I need you to pull out your phones or something to write with, just so you can yeah. write something down. Okay. 
Uh, have you guys ever seen the Newlywed Game before? Yes. N- no. Yeah. Okay. I've been a Newlywed actually. Oh. All right. Um, so Emerson, if, if do you not know what the Newlywed Game is? <laughs> I'm assuming it's the game Key and Jade played at their wedding. Uh, perhaps uh, that might have been after I left, but. <laughs> basically for anyone listening and for you if you forgot here's how this works i am gonna i'm gonna ask um when it's your turn i'm gonna ask you questions about kia and i'm gonna ask kia questions about you he's gonna write down his answers you're not gonna say anything and then once all okay. the answers are written down i'm gonna come back to you and you're gonna answer them in real time okay. if both of your answers match or are close enough to be the same you get a point. If the answers are similar, um, but if they're decided by me or by both of you that they're close enough, they get a half point. Does that make sense? Sure. All right. So who wants to start? I'll go. All right. Kia. So do I have to write anything so- down here? <laughs> uh, no. Kia is uh, – How many questions are there? Uh, I believe there's eight for each of you. Okay. Yeah, there's eight questions. All your, I'm just going to ask you them. You're going to write down your answer, and then I'm going to ask Emerson for the, the real answers. You ready? Okay. Okay. Your first question is, what is Emerson's favorite video game? Uh... Tell me when you have. Just tell me when you have the answer. <laughs> wait, do you, do you wait do a not minute, answer? Wait a minute. All right. Emerson, I'm not going to answer. I'm not Emer- going to say anything. Yeah, but, no. but are you sure you know this? Um, it has nothing to do with what I know. It's what you know and what he knows. I don't know if I know this. You're okay. going to answer. You're going to see if the answers match. Okay. Kia, tell me when you have the answer written down. The and Emerson say like, nothing. I don't know that he has a f- number one favorite game. Just just write whatever you think the answer is. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, I mean, I'm... Uh, okay. Just tell me when you have your answer written down. Okay, I'm done. Okay, your next question is, what is Emerson's preferred type of alcohol? Um, I don't even know what... Okay. Okay, your next question is, what is one of Emerson's least favorite films? It does not have to be a specific one, just one of them. Least favorite films? Mm-hmm. Um, I, can, I can hear you chuckling, Emerson. Yeah, it's like... Yeah. I have to think, like... Yeah, think for a minute. Movies that he's hated? Yeah. It has to be at least one. Okay. Remember, if you both agree that it's similar, then you get a half point. Okay. Okay. Um, your next question is, what did Emerson major in in college? Um, okay. Okay. Um, your next question is, what, do you, what is one thing that you think Emerson is better at than you? Okay. Is your answer written down? Yeah. Okay. Your next one is, which one of the two of you is the better driver? Mm, The fuck? (laughs) Just got to put down an answer. Okay. Your next question is, what is one band that Emerson listens to constantly or consistently? Uh... It's a very strange game to be playing on the yeah. podcast. Um, it's, it's the newlywed game. I didn't what, realize what me is and one were band? getting married. Yeah, um, one band. Oh, okay. Okay. And then your final question is, if Emerson was going to give you a rating on a scale of 1 to 10, what number do you think you would get? <laughs> what? In terms just, of sexual attractiveness? No, no, no. Just in general. <laughs> like, if he was rating you as a person, 1 through 10, what do you think he would score? Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Like, judging your character, who you are, like, your friendship, that kind of stuff. 1 through 10, what do you think he would score? I, okay. I mean, what's a 10? <laughs> like, the Is 10 would be Teresa? like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like deified. The one is like he hates you. Okay. All right. Are all your answers written down? Sure. All right. Emerson, are you ready to answer them and give him the answers? Sure. All right. So we're going to compare answers. So Emerson, what is your favorite video game? Uh, I, I would say I don't have a favorite, but if you force me to choose, I'll say For Honor. Okay. What did you put, Kia? <laughs> I put Age of Empires. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, 
<laughs> okay, it doesn't match, but if you guys agree that it's close enough, then you I get mean, a half I mean, that point. would definitely be one of my favorites. I don't have a favorite. Okay. I have games I play All right, well, it didn't most. match, but fine. So that didn't match, but it's a half point. Fine. All right. Emerson, what is your preferred type of alcohol? Bourbon. Yeah, what'd you put? I put whiskey bourbon. I don't know or right. if that makes that sense That counts. Or not. That counts. <laughs> that that counts. counts. Okay, so that's that one point. <laughs> nice. That's one point. All right. Emerson, what is one of your least favorite films? Red Sea Diving Resort, Birds of Prey, The Last Jedi, uh, Rise of Skywalker. Okay. All right, well, Kia, what'd you put? It too. It too. Okay, Emerson, yeah, no, no, no. That that'll count too. That's definitely right, one that, of my. That's least a that's a half point. That's fine. That's a half point. All right, Emerson, what'd you major in in college? History. History. All right, nice. So that's another point. All right, Emerson, what do you think? Um, what do you think one thing that you're better at than Kia is? Uh, I'm better at For Honor. <laughs> Kia, what'd you put? I put history. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's no point for that one. <laughs> no. Why? Boy, that, that's perfectly accurate. That is he not perfectly accurate. a degree in history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm saying the, the answers didn't match, and they're not close enough to garner a half point. He said he's better at For Honor than you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was... Okay. All right. Emerson, which one of you do you think is the better driver? Kia. Kia, what'd you put? I put Emerson. Oh. I don't think nice. he's driven with me in like five or six years. I don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you've driven longer than me and like you're aware and you don't get in I car guess, accidents. I guess, yeah. All right. Well, that I mean, I don't get still, no, still no points. Not close enough. Right. <laughs> Emerson, what's, what's one band that you listen to consistently? Starset. Kia, what'd you put? I put Daft Punk. I Emerson, do listen that... to Daft Punk. That's a half point. I All do right, listen to Daft, Daft Punk. Punk. All right. Emerson, if you had to rate Kia on a scale of 1 through 10, what do you think it is? Well, if 10's Mother Teresa, I'll say 8. <laughs> I put like... 8. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't All know right, what the scale is. <laughs> yeah, if, 10 is if 10 is Mother Teresa, then 9 is like, like – be all, like almost like amazing. Like Eight Bernie is like Sanders. best friend. Yeah, yeah. So it's like. So I'm like right beneath right. that. So you're at four. And, so you just got four and a half points, Kia. All right, okay. Emerson, are you ready for yours? So okay, yes. so you got four and Wait, a half points. So Kia. I should purposely sabotage. Okay, yeah. whatever. No, no, you're not supposed to purposely sabotage. But you're no, supposed okay, to. I'm ready. You're supposed to. But answer I the could have purposely right. sabotaged. <laughs> Kia, say nothing. Emerson, you ready to write down your answers? Okay. Yes. All right, Emerson. When is Kia's birthday? <laughs> tell me when you oh, tell, tell me when you have your answer written down. Okay. All right. What is Kia's favorite color? Oh. Okay. All right. How many Hot Toys figures does Kia currently own? What the fuck, bro? Minus the ones you bought. <laughs> However many he has, like yes. we'll we'll round it up. Just okay. put down a number and we'll see. Put down a, um, put down what you think is the minimum. The mi fine. Put no, down no, no, what you that, think is the no, minimum. No, that wouldn't make sense. Put down right. what you think is the max number that I okay. have. At this exact moment. Yeah. At this exact and it, moment. And if you're near it, then we'll give you credit. Okay. All right. Uh, next question is, who is somebody that you think Kia respects? Okay. All right, what is one person, place, or thing that Kia dislikes? What? What? This <laughs> person, place, Why don't you thing? narrow it to one category? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> things that I dislike? To... Do person, do fine. person. What is one person that Kia dislikes? <laughs> who, who is one person? <laughs> <laughs> who is one person that Kia dislikes? Okay. All right. I don't even know. Which, out of the two of you, which one of you is more honest? Uh... Okay. Okay. All right. What is a TV show that Kia has watched all the way through more than three times? Okay. And your final question is, if Kia was going to give you a rating on a scale of 1 to 10, what do you think you would get? Okay. Okay. Kia, you ready to answer? What was the question number five again? Five? Who, who do you hate? The person, yeah. the person you hate. Who's someone that you dislike? Um. Well, no. Well, let's go one by one, but... You ready to answer the questions? Okay. All right. Kia, when's your birthday? 
August 25th. Emerson? Okay, so I put November-ish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Kia, what's your favorite color? Maroon. Emerson? I put black. <laughs> I mean, that would okay. be like second. But black is like, I feel like no one can pick black. Yeah, because right, it's like so emo, but like, I don't know. It's the know. absence of color. <laughs> okay. Um, how many Hot Toys figures do you currently own? <clears throat> I said 47. 80 plus. 80 plus. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> do you think that's close enough for a half point? or? Uh, it's You can be the judge. It's half. So. <laughs> uh, I'll, eh, I'll give you a half point for it. Why not? Yay. All right. Kia, who's somebody that you... Um, who's someone you... That you respect, General Ross from Incredible Hulk. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I put Nikki. I put Nikki. I, yeah, I knew he. Okay, was. so that's one point. Nice. <clears throat> Kia, who's someone that? <laughs> Kia, who is someone that you dislike? Uh, Jade. <laughs> that is that it? Put? I put <clears throat> Mitch McConnell. Yeah, give him credit for that one. Okay, fine. I'll give him half point for that. I wasn't sure. Like, All right. it had to be like people I knew. I, I didn't know what to write. It's just it could be any person. Okay, uh, which one of the two know. of you is more honest, Kia? I mean, I don't lie, so I don't know if Emerson's uh, lying. I put Kia. <laughs> I put Kia for brutal honesty. I put Kia for brutal honesty. Yeah, maybe I should lie a little more. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you a point for that. Wow. All right, Kia, what's a TV show you that you've right watched one. all the way through more than three times? Uh, the Office. I'm I said Sopranos. That uh, is it, true. One, two. I'm on true. my third right, rewatch right now, actually. <clears throat> I'll give you a half point for that. Yeah, give him a full point. All right, point and then, uh, Kia, if you, had to rate, uh, if you had to rate Emerson on a scale of 1 to 10, what do you think you'd get? I put a 10. Emerson? Holy shit, I put a 7. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, well, that's, that's not close enough. All right, let's Mother tally Teresa. up. <laughs> Wait, so he doesn't get a point because I put a 10? <laughs> nope, it's not close enough. It doesn't match. <laughs> All right, so Everett Emerson <laughs> has three and a I half. I want to play this Kia with you, has... Everett. I want to play this. <laughs> Emerson has three and a half. Kia has four and a half. So currently... Nice. Uh, I'll... I'll do the score later, but anyway. Well, you can't do the math. <laughs> <laughs> it's three and a half points, Everett. It's not that fucking hard. <laughs> okay, hold on one sec. Let me tell you. <laughs> what? what? Just add three. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm writing in my notes. One sec. All right, so Emerson is a... Uh... <laughs> Wait, this is for the overall tally of the... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's for the overall tally. Oh, whoops. Um, <laughs> hold on, I, I fucked it up. Then, uh, <laughs> give, it, give Emerson one more point because I. How did you fuck it up? You lost. It's three. Uh, I'm, Just I'm, add I'm, three and four. I know. I'm trying to type it. Hold on. Give Emerson one more point. <laughs> Why? Because I like I wrote ten on the last one, because I was like Trump being funny. Well, okay. Then. <laughs> he, he missed the point because of it. <laughs> Okay, so Emerson's at 13 and a half. Key is at 11 and a half. All right. All right, so next week is Catch Me If You Can. Catch and Me then If You Can. We'll, we'll have to do a separate WandaVision episode. I yeah, guess we could do it right episode. before. Yeah. yeah, it'll be like 20 minutes. Yeah. All right, see you guys next time. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Iron Coop Fights Movies. Please be sure to subscribe and review so that we can spread the show around. You can reach us at theironcoop at gmail.com. Join us for another edition of the Iron Coop Fights Movies. 